I made a meme the other day about the way protesters were monitored in London at the weekend. Their placards and their chants were examined for illegal words and phrases. It was all a bit extreme. An American living here commented, well, in Hong Kong, authorities do not allow demonstrations at all. <laughs> Couldn't blame him for saying that. That's what the world has been told. We've all seen those articles, right? A draconian new national security law in Hong Kong has banned free speech. Outlaw demonstrations. Dissent of any kind is no longer allowed in the once free city, blah, 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 blah. You know, those reports from Fox, CNN, BBC, Guardian, FT, all of them. They're completely wrong, of course. People who live in Hong Kong know that newspapers and websites and chat groups here criticize the local government and the national government every day, every hour even. You can literally just pick up a newspaper or log on to a website, you can join in. But some people, even in Hong Kong, really believe that protests are no longer allowed. Let me tell you something, not only are they still allowed, but they happen all the time. Hong Kong's national security law doesn't ban protests. The only reference it makes to that topic is to say that people have a right to demonstrate. Now, I've been covering Hong Kong politics for 30 years, and the most common protests have always been the ones in which clusters of people stand outside the Legislative Council building, wanting a particular decision from Hong Kong's parliament. Those protests are still happening. It's hard to say how many of these smaller demos there are in an average month, but if you, if you walk past the Legislative Council building regularly, you'll see them. Foreigners may be less aware of them because of a change in location. In the past, the Legislative Council building was at ground level in Central, so everyone would see the crowd of protesters clustered around the LegCo door. You know, you could watch it from the bus as you went past. Now, Hong Kong's parliament is near the seafront in Admiralty, uh, set back a little, so people don't go past it, but it's still there. As for procession-type marches, there are certainly fewer of those in Hong Kong, but there are several good reasons for that. In 2019, more than 80 demos in a row turned violent, sometimes very violent. It was a genuinely traumatic time for Hong Kong people. With 90% of MTR stations smashed up, arson attacks and bomb threats in multiple districts, and people were afraid to leave their homes. Now, no one wants to go back to that. Let's remember that when there were just seven days of protests in London, also in 2019, UK authorities simply banned all protests in the city. Click, done. All protests instantly illegal. In Hong Kong, we were much more democratic, with police continuing to give out marching permits after months of violent demonstrations. But attitudes in Hong Kong have changed. Hong Kong people, many of them are now saying that the police uh, shouldn't be too soft and need to be firm about violence here. We don't like violence. We're a low crime city. In the context of that violence, it's not surprising that protest organizers and permit officials are careful about having big demonstrations here. I asked one of my friends uh, who is active in local politics to comment, and this is what he said. Small-scale protests are alive and kicking, but there are fewer big demos. One organizer told me that this is down to fears of hijack by anti-government forces. Organizers are responsible to the community, and unless they can guarantee no hijack, it's seen as quite risky. But he also added that Hong Kong people's fears of their protests being hijacked are gradually subsiding and peaceful demonstrations will return. The pendulum swings one way and then the other way, maybe a bit too far, but it all settles down. Another contact told me that Hong Kong people and the authorities will accept demos by local people raising local issues, ones which do not involve individuals or groups funded by the United States, for example. You know, one very active protest organizer in the old days was the Hong Kong Human Rights Monitor and groups related to, to those folk. What none of us knew at that time was that their staff didn't just get cash grants from foreign anti-China groups, but were actually salaried from US State Department funds. As well as the infamous NED cash, there are at least three other secret streams of money. In the Jimmy Lai trial currently underway, it was revealed that large amounts of cash were being distributed to anti-government individuals and groups by Mark Simon, a former US intelligence agent. And of course, there was our friend from the Hong Kong Free Press, stirring up trouble and pretending to be Chinese. In other words, there's far too much hostile foreign activity in the large demos. And that's something Hong Kong people of all leanings really don't want. 
So in summary, if you see people saying that protests are not allowed in Hong Kong, you can gently tell them the truth, point them to the LegCo building. If they say there's no free speech, just show them local newspapers, log them onto local websites. And if they say the national security law bans protests, ask them to go find the relevant passage and show it to you. You'll never hear from them again. You can thank me later. Peace.